I always knew that I was in the wrong body because I always felt uncomfortable in my own skin. When I was young, what I used to do was go up into a tree house that I built and I would read. And I would just stay there up in my tree because I couldn't face, I, I, you know, I just, I wanted to be somewhere else. Have your parents been supportive? My parents were not supportive initially. They staged um, an intervention and I was in my first year of law school. So my mom told me that if I didn't go along with the program and if I transitioned, then she would never be seen in public with me again. And to be told that I wasn't even fit to be seen with in public because of my, oh, because of how I was born. I knew then that I was going to have to do it alone. In high school, in junior high and high school, I went through puberty late. I'm a late bloomer. At the time, it caused me a lot of anxiety because I saw all these kids around me you know, changing and developing, especially the guys, and they were growing tall and getting hair on their bodies, and that wasn't happening to me. Now I'm so grateful because, you know, those signs of masculinity would really, you know, cramp my style. But back then, I wanted that to happen to counteract the feelings that I was having about how much I hated my body. The main secret that I kept what, starting at age 16 was um, sex addiction. And the unhealthy and destructive part of my sexuality at that time was anonymous sex, cyber sex, phone sex, basically any type of um, sexual activity that involved me like hiding who I was as a human being, anything that involved self-effacement and anything that involved me trying to erase myself. But then it reached a point where I just, I, I couldn't, I just couldn't go on anymore and I knew that I needed help. One of my friendships in recovery was with a guy who one day just had a conversation with me about taking hormones. All of a sudden, I realized that, you know, there was, I could really transition. I was worth getting surgery to be me. Like, I was worth all that, and I had lost track of that. When I first started the hormones, within a day, my compulsion to act out sexually evaporated and I felt right. And so then I felt, you know, physical changes, you know, a tenderness um, in my breasts. As they grew, the redistribution of subcutaneous fat and how it is placed on the body and, and you know, um, narrowing of the shoulders. I became more emotional and I started crying. One day in particular, I was at the pharmacy getting my hormones. I had just been to the fucking electrolysis, you know, which is this horrible um, process of inserting a needle into your hair follicles and then zapping it and then yanking it out like all over. So then my face was like this big puffy red tomato. I was like in the baseball cap and you know, bag jeans and like trying to like hide myself as much as possible. And um, the pharmacist just said, miss. And I was like, oh my God. She used the right word. Then what happened was 
I got to start interacting with men as a woman. I was, you know, very um, upfront about it because I was afraid that I would get hurt if I wasn't. Then I discovered there's a whole group of men who like, you know, pre-op or non-op. I had a conversation with a guy once and I said, you know, if I have the surgery, would you be interested in me anymore? And he said no. And then he answered exactly the answer that I knew he was going to answer, which was, well, because then you would be like every other woman, except you'd be deficient because you couldn't have babies. So why would I want to date you? I believed that. And I was scared of the operation. I feared that something would go wrong and I would turn into a mutant, uh, that my doctor would fuck up and um, then I would repel men for the rest of my existence on earth or that I would lose the capacity to feel pleasure or have an orgasm. I had all these, you know, parade of horribles that were going on in my head. And then I added that voice from that guy saying, oh, you know, why would, then you'll just be like, you know, some meaningless blob or whatever. Did your voice change? Like, at the point you're trying to? No, the voice is all learned. I mean, I can still actually talk like a guy if I want. I'm not going to. I was really happy and I thought maybe I can just go like this and not risk the surgery. Maybe I can just get by. And then I was studying. There was another Italian guy who was bar none the hottest guy in the class of 200. Yet, there we were at a party and he was staring at me from across the room the whole time. We talked and he told me that he had even thought of putting a note in my mailbox to get my attention. And I was like, you want my attention? Then we went out in Amsterdam and it got really steamy and the whole thing and then we came back. I just said, I have to tell you something and um, I told him and he just yelled at me, slammed the door and walked out and told me never to talk to him ever again. I came back to New York. A few days after I returned, um, I was sexually assaulted. He knew that I was pre-op and he didn't care. He just, you know, put me in a chokehold and told me to do what he wanted or else he would kill me. And Where were you? I was in my apartment. I realized that if I nodded that he might loosen his chokehold up enough for me to get out. And that's what I did and I ran outside and screamed. By that point, he had gotten my clothing off, and so I was screaming in the hallway, naked, and trying to, you know, cover my genitalia. A few years later, I would read about a transgender woman who was treated uh, at the scene by paramedics who apparently cut off her pants and saw her genitalia and just like laughed at her. I realized how vulnerable I was to an emergency where that could happen because like when I had um, control over my presentation, like I could deal with it, I'd learn to cope, but I realized, oh my God, what happens if I just, if, you know, what, here I am, I'm, you know, naked in a hallway screaming for help. I, I can't go on like this. I took the New York bar exam and then um, scheduled my surgery in Thailand and then I had it. My last thought as I went under was, I saw the world. My first thought when I woke up was, I am alive. 
And then my next thought was, why are all of these Thai nurses circled around my bed giggling? And one of them pointed, you know, down, and she's just like, beautiful. And I just thought, oh, wow, I get to be beautiful now, you know. I finally, finally get to give it a shot. Wow. When I was in the wrong body, I could never have an orgasm. And now I can. Now I finally feel that I'm comfortable in my body, that I'm as close as I can be to the right one, to allow myself to fall in love and to be vulnerable and to let go. Things are good with your mom? Now things are good with my mom. I talk to her every day. They're also good with my dad. He called me every day in Thailand. My mom says I don't understand men. You know, they're different from us, she says to me. So great, amazing. She posted a picture of me and her at the beach. Someone said, oh, she looks so much like you. My mom is just like, wow. so happy about that now. Would you trade? Would you trade the whole experience and have them born and grow? I don't know. Because I would not want to relinquish a single experience that I've had on this earth. But if you said to me, Zoe, I could wave a magic wand I could make you a girl from the beginning in your body, in the right one, so that you could grow up, experience the things that other little girls experienced, and ex get your first period, and date as a high school kid, and as a college kid. And you won't, lose 98 to 99% of potential boyfriends just because of the way you were born. If you said to me, Zoe, I can wave a magic wand and make that happen, how could I not say yes? Can you ask, can you respond to why in your body is a good place to be? Because took so much to get here.